Hello party people! Are you ready to make a cake with me? It might not look the best when it's finished, it might look way better than mine, but I can guarantee you it's going to taste delicious. It is a carrot cake and I gotta tell you, I have never had a carrot cake before. This is my first time and it's delicious. But I also have nothing to compare it to, so can you trust me? Who knows? This is what you're going to need. Uh, some walnuts. I'll get into the measurements as we do it, and also I will also try to link the recipe below. Four eggs, uh, three quarters cup of crushed pineapple, a cup and a half of pureed carrots, some salt, cinnamon, and that is almond extract back there, but the recipe calls for vanilla. You guys know how I feel about vanilla. It's plain, it's vanilla, you know what I mean? Um, and then some sugar, oil, and flour, cake basics. Here we go. That is my wonderful inspiration photo. Can we try to make it look like that? We try our best, do you know what I mean? So I open this can of carrots. The first thing I'm gonna do is puree the carrots. And I found a rotten one. What, that's never happened before, even though I barely have canned carrots ever. So I wonder if that happens a lot to people, poor things. I did buy fresh carrots and I planned on boiling them and then I figured huh, I'm lazy and there's way too many steps to this recipe as there as it is. So I'm just gonna puree them myself, like easy way, skip a step, I don't have to boil them. And I realized the cup idea was just a bad idea. And so I put them in a bowl and then realized, oh, my friggin' blender is broken, but I did what I could. And here I am measuring out the pineapple, the crushed pineapple. You just need three quarters cup of that and then I added it to the, I'm not even sure if that's a cup and a half of carrots, but I just used a can and rolled with it. And you know what, for a carrot cake, that's not a lot of carrots to be pudding, you know what I mean? There's like way more sugar. Okay, three cups of sugar. Yes, it is cake, guys. And you know what, it's a huge cake, so just roll with it. Three cups of sugar, and if you can see, that's a cup and a half of oil I'm adding. Well, Eleanor is my helper back there. And if you see, I look at my notes, the recipe on the side here, like a million times. I'm adding four eggs to the sugar and oil mixture, and then I'm just blending that up until it's mm, delicious looking. And then I am sifting the flour. How many cups of flour? Three cups of flour? And I'm sifting it. I'm not sure if this is a necessary step, but it's something that um, I've always been told to do. I'm adding one tablespoon of baking soda to it, and then also one tablespoon of ground cinnamon. That adds the flavor. I serve this on Easter, and then just a little bit of salt. I think it says one, one teaspoon of salt, but I just eyeball it. And then I'm sifting it to aerate it, get all the lumps out, you know, make it all fancy. Um, so I served this recipe on Easter, Sunday and one person said it kind of tastes like a spice cake mix. I don't know. I guess it kind of does. It's delicious. But the only spice I added was cinnamon. The next step I'm doing is just chopping up um, a cup and a half of walnuts. And then you'll also need more walnuts to decorate the cake, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, you could I could have also thrown the walnuts into like a Ziploc bag and, you know, whacked them away with a rolling pin, but this was my choice. It was a bad choice. I made a lot of bad choices making this cake. <laughs> okay, I know for next time, okay? And then I'm adding a cup and a half of shredded coconut. The recipe actually calls for frozen coconut. I looked for that, couldn't find it anywhere. If you could find it, go right ahead. My coconut is unsweetened uh, due to the massive amounts of sugar that I've already added to this cake, but um, you can add uh, sweetened coconut if that floats your boat. Okay, and I'm basically just pre-measuring these ingredients and then putting them aside. This is me reading my notes again. And I was like, wait, is this what I'm supposed to do? Dry into the wet, that's the right thing? Yes, it is. And then um, I'm gonna read my, <laughs> my list again. Make sure, what's the next step? Yes, add all of the rest of the ingredients to the bowl. You don't have to read the directions 17 times like I did. And then, as you can see, it's almost overflowing in my KitchenAid, but I'm gonna make it work because I'm not gonna waste my muscle power on mixing this by hand, even though, I don't know, it wouldn't have taken that much. So I'm mixing it in my KitchenAid. Hallelujah, love this thing. Best Mother's Day gift I ever got like three years ago. Uh, yeah, so just mix the cake. I may have over mixed mine, I don't know. Um, what causes the cake to like dip in the middle a little bit when it's done? Uh, whatever caused that, I did it. And here I am, I just have nine, nine. I have three nine inch cake pans and I just oil them to ensure nothing sticks to the cake pan and I did my job beautifully. Can I get a round of applause for the one thing that I did right? Um, and then I'm just evenly distributing the cake batter into the three pans. I didn't measure 
It's not rocket science. It's a cake, guys. Okay, don't take it too seriously like I tried to do. Uh, through the pan, through the dish in the sink, I'm throwing the uh, cakes into the oven at 350 degrees for 40 to 45 minutes. Mine were done at 40 minutes. Maybe I should have left them in and they wouldn't have dipped in the middle. I don't know. I stuck them with a toothpick. They were donezo. So I'm throwing them on a cooling rack after leaving them in the pan for five minutes per the directions. And then I realized, oh my gosh, they're upside down. Ugh. Maybe I should have just left them upside down. Who cares? And then it was a huge debacle, me trying to like flip them over. Uh, whatever. Use a plate. Use your mind. I did not use mine. Clearly. So I let those cool on the counter until they were all cool. And we're going to start on the um, icing. So you need a stick and a half of butter, two blocks, two eight ounces um, of cream cheese. And then I just blended that up in my lovely KitchenAid once again and until it was like all smooth. I know when you're making buttercream, you're supposed to like cream the butter for like 10 minutes. I didn't do that with this. I don't know if it would have made a difference. And then I'm just throwing the powdered sugar into uh, the butter and cream cheese mixture, one cup at a time. And how many cups of powdered sugar do you need for the icing? You need six cups, but I used a whole bag. And I wanna say, I think I added a little bit more from my pantry as well. So I used a whole bag and then a little bit more from my pantry, maybe like half a cup or so, just because I found that my um, butter, well, whatever kind of, what is this, cream cheese frosting, my frosting was a little bit on the um, like runny side, even though I could have just thrown it in the fridge for like 30 minutes, it would have been fine whatever I digress so you need six cups of confectioner's sugar and then you can add two teaspoons vanilla extract into the uh, frosting and here I am this is the best part of all I am frosting the cake first of all this is mesmerizing I personally I love watching people make cakes I'd love eating cake <laughs> I love making cake I love frosting cakes even though I'm not such a profesh at it no these are not perfect layers. I should have leveled them out. I should have like made it all nice and fancy, but I didn't. And I paid the price because guess what, guys? Totally nailed that. Look at that little bulge on the corner. But you know what? Who cares? That's how you can tell. It was made with love. It's homemade. It's not perfect. And we're going to get over it because that's life, right? At the end of the day, we dug into it on Easter and it was a delicious. And that is why I, pl I wanted to share this recipe with you because it's a great one. And I would have done you a disservice if I decided to keep it all to myself. <laughs> no. Alex was like, what do you think people are going to say when they see this? And I was like, Alex, they're going to tell me how wonderful it looks and how much they love it. So I hope you guys tell me how much you love it in the comments below. And P.S. totally nailed it. No regrets. And I've eaten about half of it already. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you decide to make this. You don't have to wait for Easter to make it because um, to be honest, it doesn't really taste anything like carrots. And what does carrots have to do with Easter anyway? Can I get an amen? Okay, so thank you again for hanging out with me and I'll see you next time. Bye. Okay guys, so I just spent, I don't know, a couple hours making this cake but this is what it looks like in real life. Hey. Does that look any better? Lie to me. Could be worse, am I right? It looks semi-okay, acceptable. Anyway, I'm trying to look for a bunny to throw in the middle. Or maybe some plastic eggs. That's what I'm going to do, plastic eggs. <laughs> All right.